You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, and streaming live on Ustream, this is AfterBuzz TV for John Benjamin Has a Van. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest John Benjamin Has a Van news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, picking up where the show leaves off, and the buzz continues, it's After Buzz TV for John Benjamin Has a Fan! What up, listeners? And thank you, Disembodied Voice, for forgetting our names. I know it happens. And I, I know I'm sure you're they're, sorry. They're not very common American names. They're yeah, very hard to remember. Right. Like, yeah, that's true. Especially... Jax has all of seven letters. <laughs> Total. <laughs> I know. Some it's, people it's, have it's, first names longer than that. I know. Mine Mine is actually Hindi. Uh, That's why it's really hard for Americans. As you can see, because we're all on camera. Yay! Yep. Illusion uh, anyway, of movement. Anyway, uh, folks, um, I'm John Barrett. I am the host of this here program. Uh, with me, as always, uh, is Greg Goodness. Yay! Right here to my right. A and person. Mr. Jack Waz. The man. Sitting by himself, yay! Because he's sad and alone. I'm not being a jerk this week by going to a Transformers screening. Oh, that's right. That's why you missed last week. Yep. Transformers. I had Transformers to sit through a three. Two and a half hour toy commercial. How was it? It's fun. Cool. Was John it? Benjamin has a van, and we have a podcast about it, folks. I like that. Yeah, Let's we stick talked with that. about that. We talked about how we liked that last time. Oh, so you actually remembered? <laughs> Yeah, I remember and things. And I just forget everything. I sometimes I remember things. Um, so I just want to uh, my um, also hey everyone out there in listener land, sorry that Wilfred's playing on the screen. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you guys we'll should check that fine. show out if you haven't already. Yeah, we do a podcast about that this as well. This is cross promotion right now. Ah, exactly. copy that. Ah, so it's not a mistake. It's clever marketing. That's what it is. Nice. Bravo. Uh, so this week on John Benjamin has a van. Ruffy the Pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> Which, oh, God. Oh. I, I, w- I want to see a full Ruffy the Pigeon sketch. Me three. Just an ass pigeon walking <laughs> around New York. I mean, is there, like, a nice pigeon? I know that they try to, like, you know, sort of sugarcoat them on Sesame Street with Bert and Ernie and all that, but... Most pigeons. Bert Ernie are pigeons? No, like Bert really likes pigeons. Yeah. That's his thing. Really? I don't remember that. Yeah, that's totally Bert's like. Oh, wait, wait, I thought that was Ernie. Doesn't he like birds? That Ernie his? has his rubber ducky. That's Bert it. Bert yeah. is like pigeon crazy, which I guess is supposed to prove what a dicky is, which yeah. says something <laughs> about pigeons. What an odd couple. Yes. Yeah, really. They share a bedroom. I'm so yeah. happy they're putting on mob wives right now. This is awesome. Oh, sweet. Um. Anyway, uh, I I love the opening of his first of John Benjamin's first little uh, segment where he's got the mic up to about his nose. <laughs> it took me like pretty much until the very end of the skit, like opening, to realize what was going on there. Oh, to God. understand that he had it at his forehead. <laughs> just all the weird mic jokes they do every episode are just so terrific. I, I love how they play with the fact that it's zero budget. Yeah. Like they just they they, ma- they conscientiously make the choice to make it look as terrible as possible. Yep. It's pretty amazing. And pretty in that we amazing. find beauty. Exactly. Uh man, the one thing I noticed this week, well, I noticed a lot of things, but the thing I noticed most, John Benjamin really hates babies. Yeah. <laughs> he hates them so bad. I mean, we started I think th- that yes, that is what John Benjamin hates is crying whiny babies. I think the episode where he drives through the Stargate and hits the kids and kills kids to begin with, by the way, 
but then has the line biological offspring bring unhappiness to us all <laughs> i think that's john benjamin's thesis for this entire series oh absolutely it's just biological offspring bring unhappiness to us all i do i, think... I do love the da- the idea of a single dad yeah. triathlon but i think my favorite like line is that or idea is that it takes valuable seconds away from your triathlon (laughs) time to put a helmet on the baby during the bike part. Raising the question, do you really have those seconds to spare? Do you really want to give those up? I love the adorable little raft that they have to tug the baby (laughs) in. (laughs) Not a very safe raft for a baby. Not at all. Which I guess they raise that point, right? But... Yeah. Oh, uh... Let's see. John Benjamin is a lonely guy, too. That's the other thing I took down. Oh, the woman coming up to him. I'm very, very lonely right now. Are you hitting on me? The most awkward interaction (laughs) between a man and woman I've ever seen. Outside my own life, uh, the most awkward I've ever seen. That's basically every encounter that I have (laughs) with a woman. Are you... Hitting on me right now? That's my Greg impression as opposed to my John Benjamin impression. Yeah. They're very similar. Only my voice isn't as silky smooth. No. <laughs> um, also, uh, so we go from them basically trying to kill babies as many ways as possible. And then, <laughs> oh, oh, uh, the, the referee explaining, it's basically a half Iron Man with a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I can't G-D. help but feel that ties into a two and a half men joke somehow. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Two and a half <laughs> Iron Man's and a baby. So be- before we move on to the main storyline, but relating to kids, the switcheroo was brilliant. That thing is like straight out of Wonder Shows and should yeah, be really, a real show. Absolutely. That was really a funny. rich kid from the city and a rich kid from, from the, the country. country. Yeah. First off, Bayshore, not the country. Just gonna point. Uh, just gonna throw this out there. I uh, I grew up about two towns over from Bayshore, New York, and um, it's not the country. But does that have beautiful views like that? I, uh, I mean, there there's a little neighborhood in Bayshore that does, but mostly it's not like that at all. You had mentioned that that is definitely not a real house in Bayshore. I'm. And almost, do you know that for a fact? I mean, I and prove it. It doesn't look like a house in Bayshore. It looks like a house in Bayport, which is a few towns over. <laughs> I'm being such a nerd. The Bayport kids were the rich kids, okay? All right. okay? Anywhere that has bay in it is like rich kid territory. I mean, yeah. I I know. I grew up on the south shore of Long Island. I know how bays work. <laughs> <laughs> Did you grow up on East Egg or West Egg? Uh, first off, that's on the North Shore. Idiot. Oh wait, that's right. It's a real place and not just like. Well, I mean, it's it's not really a real a, place. It, it's not really a real place. It's Manhasset and Great Net. You know what? We don't need to get into the geography. Welcome uh, to the Great Gatsby podcast. Uh, of the Great oh Gatsby. I'm sorry. This Jesse put on uh, Mob Wives on the TV behind us. No, this is not Mob Wives anymore. This is Celebrity Rehab. No, this is Mob Wives. Is uh, it? Celebr- that's just a bumper for the ne- uh, uh, new season. I think it says but, a lot that you can't tell the difference. Yeah, these, <laughs> these women look like they were beaten with a sack of nickels. Like, it is. I mean, they're in the mob. It's yeah. true. This and is don't, horrible. I, I wouldn't say that out yeah. loud because <laughs> thugs, uh, the show is to be believed. These are lovely women. These are lovely women. Um, who and are not their engaged. husbands are wonderful men. Yeah. And there's nothing illegitimate about them. They're, 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 they're wonderful human beings, and I retract my previous statement on my own free will. Yes, and not because... The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily <laughs> reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Jesse, so to- covering his ass. <laughs> <laughs> he's got, like, the mob burst in, and he's just like, Whoa, man, didn't you hear the disclaimer? <laughs> didn't you hear it? I, I played it. <laughs> So back to the ma- back to the show, and the main storyline we have John Benjamin driving his van. Before we mm-hmm. get to the main storyline, there was one more segment, and they did a weird format right, thing right. where they did a brief segment like the triathlon dad. Then they did shame on me, bringing back uh, from the other segment. I like the idea of shame on me a lot more than I like the actual execution of shame. I on like me. this one a little bit better than I liked the previous one. I liked it more, it's... but it's still it's not quite there yet. Yeah, I get. I guess. Um, uh, the one moment here I'm going to nerd out again uh, is 
How do they? It, they've they've established this world where there's a camera team following uh, Edward Cheese, mm-hmm. and they follow him into his own session, and somehow they get a close up of the doctor. Wait, what? Oh, Never. because there's like two. Well, there could be two cameras, right? I mean, I guess. Yeah, there, there's you there's guess. a lot of logical things that don't quite work in John Benjamin. Like when he <laughs> yeah. travels through a star door and hits <laughs> kids. Yeah, but they're in they're in Area 54. <laughs> so they're all coked up and in Area 51. <laughs> um, the one thing that I am gonna pull that like I agree that it's not like my favorite bit that they do, but the one thing that I am gonna pull from Shame on Me is suppress success. God damn it, you fucking asshole. Yeah. Which is going to be, I feel like I should get that engraved on wood somewhere <laughs> and hang it have up it in, in my room. room. Just have it as a, just Greg, have it as a collar piece gonna be, tattoo. That's going to be my Christmas gift to you. Please, dude, if you got that for me for Christmas, like, you could never do wrong by me again. I'm, I'm not sure if it's better than the Archer uh, telegram I sent you. Oh, though. yeah. Uh, those of you out there, maybe I can bring it in as, like, show and tell for <laughs> next week or sometime. Maybe when we do the Archer podcast. Maybe. Yay! Uh, but Jack actually sent me a telegram, which I didn't know existed anymore. That was a quote from Archer. It said, Tyrannosaurus, stop. Merry Christmas. Stop love. Uh, Ajax mommy, a success. Ajax a success. I can't quote it directly, which shows what a terrible uh, fanboy I am. Jerk. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Jack gets good presents. So all you on AfterBuzz, hit him up for presents. I will give you guys AfterBuzz TV exclusive. How about uh, I'll give a mystery present to the first person to call in. If we Ooh. have, yeah, I'll give a mystery. I will ship a mystery gift to you if you call in. If you call in, I oof, I uh, th- that's a good offer. Internet after buzz. Uh, take it. I mean, it's a good offer. You might get some weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> There's some weird stuff in our apartment. Yeah. Oh. Do, do you guys do you guys want an HD DVD player? Because you know what? that'll be it. I have. No I have. Does. Hey, actually, we have a caller on the line. Really? Do we really? Sweet. Copy Put them through. Hey guys. Hey. hey. You are our first caller ever, and as such, you win a prize. What's your All name? Right, so this is um, DJ Jesse, and I want to fuck a prize. Jesse, you God, asshole. We've been Damn it. punked. <laughs> we've been hoodwinked by some but asshole now, in a booth. Now we made the promise. Now you have to ship. Damn it. I have to ship Jesse an HD DVD player. <laughs> <laughs> I have one. I also have the Just HD DVD Just bring it next Animal time we're House. here. Just uh, bring it the next time we're here. I actually kind of want to ship. <laughs> <laughs> you ass. Our callers are jerks. <laughs> no, actually, he's our second caller all time because I called in. Oh, that's right. true. And we did have an interview on the phone one. For, for Wilfred. Yeah. But that was totally different. Yes, it was. Anyways, so yeah, uh, Jack, before I rudely interrupted, you were getting into the main plot. Of, all right, uh, so main plot. So uh, John Benjamin's driving. He gets cut off by a minivan and gets bitten by a Hasidic a Jew. Wear a Jew. wear Jew. This show very quickly became the most offensive thing on television. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was thinking. That. I was like, man, you know, like, South Park, pretty offensive, but I don't think they've ever gone this far. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, it was brilliant in its stupidity. Yeah. Also, I have Hasidic zombies, question mark, written down, yeah. and then, nope, Werewolves. <laughs> John, what were you saying was the uh, official NYPD? Uh, I'm not going to say that. I've just heard people say the word Hasid. That's the uh, slang. That's the, abbrevi- that's the abbreviation. That's the abbreviation for uh, Hasidic, Hasidic Jewish, Jewish fellow. That's the hipster abbrev, yeah. as it were. Yeah. I gotcha. <laughs> I love, I'd love to see Nathan back, by the way. Nathan talking about oh, his yeah. swimming lesson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like how they make the crew weirder I just and be weirder. Be- yeah. You don't know how to swim. I just want to do it better. <laughs> <laughs> Which is such a legitimate response for him to have. Poor Nathan, like the only semi-normal person in the universe of John Benjamin <laughs> as a man. And they still make him weird because he's so normal. So <laughs> he has a crazy dream sequence, only he wakes up and there's blood in the bed. <laughs> I had also... like I know I was taught in, like when we were taught about uh, 
forget birds and the bees. Oh yeah, when we were taught about that in like high school, we were taught that like it's part of certain traditions that like you show off the like the blood sheet. Yeah, and and I had flashbacks to that class. <laughs> yeah, Which it was were great. Uh, like as soon as that happened, at first I was like, "Wow, they're gonna do a Jew episode. That's really offensive." And then <laughs> the blood, the blood sheets, literally, my jaw dropped. <laughs> And my jaw doesn't drop very often. No, Greg has a very sturdy jaw. Greg's jaw is on lock. Yeah. I actually have... What's he the disease? Lock jaw. Lock jaw. Yeah. Oh, tetanus. That gives <laughs> you a lock jaw. I have tetanus, everyone. <laughs> and I still got dropping jaw syndrome. Yeah. From this episode. So he has both tetanus and dropping jaw syndrome. Speaking, of, a- speaking ah! of having both things, so then John is out driving with his Hasidic wife. And they nearly rear end a Volkswagen <laughs> Beetle. <laughs> That's a funny choice of words. Because yeah. then he gets bit by a were gay. By the way, uh, the guy playing the were gay, uh, Drew Droge, very fantastic guy. Uh, if you guys are in Los Angeles, check him out, the Groundlings. He is awesome. Shameless plug. Shameless, shameless. He's, he's a good guy. Yeah, no, have no doubt. He did good on the also, show. He played money. a really good wear gay. So yes, he was a fantastic wear gay. <laughs> Very convincing. Um, oh, we forgot to talk about the 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 punch out of the switcheroo, which is two ha- guys named Harrison Ford getting switcheroo. <laughs> <laughs> Not the real Harrison Ford. It was, it was the name. Harrison Ford of San Jose and, and the, the Harrison, Harrison Ford, Ford of San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! Oh my God! Um, one of my jo- one of the things I ha- notes I have written down is bear greasing fist equals yup. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what a weird way to end that transaction. They they went graphic in this episode so between graphic. the fisting and the blood on the sheets. Uh, what smells like mineral oil? I was greasing the chains on our bikes. <laughs> <laughs> Your chicken fat is cold. <laughs> Is chicken it's, fat schmutz or is it? I think it's schmutz. That, that's what I. Th- I'm pretty sure it's schmutz. Uh, I love. I love just the reveal of the acidic Jew on top of acidic Jew yeah. in the apartment. All of, and also the guy who plays his brother-in-law. I've done stand-up with. Oh. Yeah. I like the torch element. Yeah. Just in <laughs> case. Torch. Just in case we weren't quite getting that it's an angry mom. <laughs> and, and then Drew pops in again. Yeah. <laughs> the wear gaze just in his apartment. Which is problematic, considering how they're all rallying against him for being such a <laughs> yep. depraved homosexual. Yeah. Oh, the line! Oh my God, his line when he he drives and when he rear ends the the wear gay, is why don't you go have anal with your depraved friend? <laughs> <laughs> what a horrible thing! <laughs> <laughs> and then he so he gets chased out and he hops in the van, and big reveal. We're all werewolves, They're John. All werewolves. <laughs> Which again, I thought was uh I said this on the other podcast that we just did uh for Wilfred, but I thought that was supposed to be like a really deep and meaningful, like sort of we're all werewolves. We're all our own werewolves. Right. And I thought about it, I was like, Oh man, that's a really deep, like touching way to wrap out the episode. Nope, it's just everyone in the van is a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God bless you, John Benjamin has a van. And yeah. we have a podcast about it. Oh, uh, uh, one thing I needed to mention, because uh, I have now established myself as a total m- guy who works in the movie industry nerd. <sighs> um, in the scene where John Benjamin turns uh, into a uh, Hasid, a were Hasid, uh, <laughs> there's so much haze in that scene, and I hate that stuff. Because of how it's produced and it's a pain. Yeah, and also it gives everyone cancer. Oh, it does, <laughs> it does it? Yeah. 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 Oh, no. It what says a... that on the can of stuff that you pour into the machines to produce it. It's yeah, like I've worked... this might give you cancer. Stay away. I've worked on shows <laughs> where like they gas the entire soundstage. It smells mm. so. It smells like cancer. That's terrible. It absolutely yeah. does. So, so yeah, before... <laughs> pretty uh, pretty good episode this week. Yeah. Before yeah. we wrap out, I do have a few odd notes and ends. And you can feel Go free ahead. to chase me off with a flaming torch. Or Probably whatever. will. Um, first off, I know all of those places that they did zoom ins on when John wakes up <laughs> in the Hasidic neighborhood <laughs> because we're in LA and I've mm-hmm. drove through there a bunch of times. And it made me happy. Mm. The other, Where when is he that, goes. Like La Brea or? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, it's that whole it's that whole area uh, down Pico. by like New Beverly yeah, yeah. Uh, Cinema. For those of you who are in the area, uh, L.A. nerds. Yeah, super L.A. nerds. Is Sonic sponsoring? this episode because they did a they had a sonic bag in there and i can't imagine that sonic would want to be associated with it there's no sonics around la or new york oh is that maybe a little inside wink no oh wait no there's one in central islip new york right now and where central islip yeah exactly (laughs) it's close to bayshore i so maybe he got it after he dropped off the second the the country kid yeah the sex shop that he walks into says a discreet sex shop. And, that's, <laughs> and we all know that's uh, the best kind kind of sex shop. Oh, I didn't know. Actually, th- uh, in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, which is okay. home to Dollywood. Okay. Uh, it's this like. going to be weird. It's like the Vegas of the Smoky Mountains. Okay. And there's nothing but amusement parks and go-kart tracks, like the Grand Ole Opry. And there's two sex shops. And one is called La Sex shop but it's l-e-s-e-x-x-e s-h-o-p-p-e that's my favorite sex shop name ever yep we're road trip road trip to pigeon forge tennessee What's john benjamin one? has a van and we have a podcast about it road trip guys yeah yeah what's the something. other one called yeah oh i can't remember this la sex shop is the best idiot yeah. <laughs> You set it up like it was an important part of the story that there are two, and no, one of them is called two. this, and the other one is, oh, I don't know, I can't remember. No, I think the other one's next to a Crystal Burger. Ew! <laughs> crystal Burger? It's like uh, it's like White Castle for the sale. And um, that's a sex shop? Not Crystal Burger. <laughs> <laughs> the Crystal, crystal Burger, is, burger a re- sex is a regional shop. chain of burger restaurants. And with that, we're going to go to our first commercial break. Want to find out what the after buzz is about? Janice is a drama queen. This is the divide that is going to carry the series. Give us a call. 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. It's television, and they want it to be as dramatic as possible. I mean, it's Shakespearean. You never know what goes on behind closed doors. Find out why After Buzz TV is the number one source for after show content. Now, in the eyes of Jimmy... Nucky is a villain. 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. I mean, who would you guys rather hear that from? Your husband or your best friend? Uh, the wig! The wig will come out. That wig. When the TV show is over, get your after buzz on. Last week I went onto eBay and I bought a staple shirt. And there it is. That's the official staple shirt that Staples employees wear. And now I'm going to go into Staples wearing my Staples shirt. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I yeah, didn't even realize. <laughs> those pens up there, those gel. No, I honestly don't want to care. I'm serious. It's just my shirt. I forgot I was wearing my staple shirt today. I'm sorry. It's... Sorry. With no coat on? Yeah. I'm just looking around. Sorry. I don't buy your ad. I... What can I tell you? I wish I worked here. Envelopes. I know we have. CD things you have? I have no idea. We don't work here. Oh, you don't? Oh, you work here, no? No. Oh, you I thought you staples. No, I thought you worked here. No. <laughs> you were holding staples. No, oh. I don't know. Oh, okay.
to reiterate the fact that he doesn't work at Staples. He does not work at Staples. The reason why uh, I thought this might make a good special segment is because it kind of transitions to how this show was born. Uh, I think we discussed it briefly the first time that we uh, did the podcast. Yeah, I think so. But uh, this show basically was born out of just weird little sketches that John Benjamin would do. Um, mm-hmm. And a lot of them, he said, never saw the light of day. Uh, this one was a new one. And you could tell because he actually had the van in the background, but not that new because there wasn't an ass painted on the van, <laughs> which is the real reason I wanted to do this special segment because it proved without a doubt that there was at one point they're like, yeah, we have the van and he's on the front. And someone said, no, we need to paint a butt on it. <laughs> <laughs> to paint his butt yeah. on the back of the van. Someone looked at that van and said, there's something missing. What and then someone what? answered that question what? with a butt. Yes. <laughs> Which is how I answer most questions. <laughs> it's true. If you saw John's SATs, it literally, every just, answer is a butt. Yeah, he uh, I didn't I didn't fill out a scantron. I just hand wrote a butt everywhere. And I got a 2100 on the new SAT. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually literally true. I'm smart. No, you yeah, I did. You did? Did you? Re- then no, why'd you go to Emerson? Because <laughs> I only got into Fordham otherwise. Ooh. And that's in the Bronx. No one wants Fordham. You legitimately got a 2100 on Yes, your I SAT. legitimately got a 2100 on my SATs. Oh, but a perfect score is 2400 on the yes, SATs. Yes, right. Okay, I thought you oh, okay. got a perfect score. Yeah, I, thought you, I thought you were brilliant, not <laughs> just Oh, I thought you were great. Average. No, F you. Yeah. I thought you were just like I, I got a 5 billion on something. mine. That's not BS. A thing. I don't remember how much I also got a 34 in my ACTs. I'm smart. Although, I w- if I remember those SATs correctly, it's a totally veer off from John Benjamin. But there was a huge scandal because on the new essays, they found out that as long as you just filled up the entire page, you would get the highest score possible. Really? So as long you, you would have been fine writing butts. But as long as you just wrote butts over and over and over again until it filled up the whole page, perfect score. Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah. It no didn't. Way. It literally didn't matter. You could predict the score based on where the line ended. I was gonna say, like, how could they even quantify all those essays? Yeah, exactly. I actually, which is apparently really... why they just looked at how long it was. I actually oh did God. really poorly on the essay, and mine was short, so well, there that you would go. make there sense. We go. Uh, but <clears throat> to get back to John Benjamin, of ever so briefly, uh, there is another example that maybe I can bring in next week, but you should all go out and find it on your own. But of John Benjamin literally doing the very earliest incarnation of John Benjamin has a van online. It's like, like a man YouTube. on the street interview. Yeah, it's like a man on the street, and he has a van, and it's not nearly as nice as the van he has now, <laughs> ass or no. <laughs> um, but it's uh, sort of the birth of John Benjamin as a van. <clears throat> so just a quick little reminder, this is uh, where we came from, and this is where we're going. As it were. Where we'll go to. Oh, awesome. and also, uh, really quickly before we go, the woman says, I don't buy your act for a minute. Which could either mean she thinks he really does work at Staples <laughs> and she doesn't buy that he doesn't work there. Or she's really aware that she's being punked and just doesn't go, oh, where are the cameras? I think it's, I think she thinks he actually works at Staples. Yeah, I sort of think that too. Sorry. I like to explore all possibilities. We should track her down as a special segment next week. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Do that, Jack. Yeah, John, you know everyone in New York. You can find her. I mean, she's probably in California somewhere, maybe. I thought they shot most of this in New York. Really? Yeah. I thought it was Pretty sure uh, most LA of this news. was shot in uh, New York. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Uh, predictions. 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 Spooky. <laughs> and now, you're after Buzz TV. Predictions. I predict that Ed Helms will be on next week's episode and well, have a big thing of peanut butter. Who doesn't predict that about every show? You're confusing I'm confusing this with Wilfred again, aren't I? Yeah. You are. What uh, can we expect from John Benjamin? I predict that we're going to see more of butts on vans and John Benjamin's going to annoy people in the street. Here's a question. Do you think that they can ever get more offensive than what they just did? Oh, definitely. I dare them to. I would love to see that. I would love to see that as well, Uh, just because, you know what? Why not? Absolutely. Absolutely. Which is funny, because that's a production company. Oh, my God. We can both sign off the same way, if only you didn't say anything. 
I know. The show and the Wait, podcast. We can do it in three seconds. Ready? Okay. One, two, three. Absolutely. All right, but I'm going to give a legitimate uh, sign off. Uh, thank you for listening, listeners. Uh, on behalf of Jack Waz, Greg Goodness, Yo. DJ Jesse Janity, the man, myself, John Barrett, I'd like to thank you for listening to John Benjamin Has a Van and We Have a Podcast About It. Uh, and tune in next week for more. Same bat time. From producers Kevin Undergaro and Phil Svitek, engineer DJ Jesse Janity, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. If you have questions or comments, be sure to buzz us at info at AfterBuzzTV.com. And you can find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter by searching for AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.